our home sweet home in flight. Amazing cargo capacity still can achieve all the speed required. And you can do everything on board. It is a flying home. Now, can it fight? You probably wonder about it. Can it defend itself? Let's test it out. This is how my home looks on the landing pad and let me give you a quick tour on the inside. After we enter, the first door are into the cockpit. There are doors to one side, there are doors to the other side. So perfect connections, that's the cockpit. Plenty space inside. Really spacious cockpit. Uh, then to one side, you have Always all the pharmaceutical the labs and I so on. I think right. that's only pharmaceutical lab in this one. Yeah, that's the pharmaceutical lab. And then if you go to other side, you have all other workbenches. And back in here, there is more spaces with beds, everything nicely connected. There is no maze, there is no ladders, there is nothing like that. The bed is straight behind the cockpit, the closest one. So just go out of the cockpit, you will find the bed. Everything close and the exit, uh, the new Atlantis just behind the cockpit. If you will be docking somewhere, the docker exit is in here. So everything nice, compact. I hate being lost in my own ship. So you can see it's turning rather slowly for the test. We just shoot whatever around Alpha Centauri and they will probably get upset about it. And we'll see what happens after that. So you can see speed is there. You just turn very slowly. Need to get in range and we'll shoot this Alive. ship. Look at that. Alive. It seems to be provoked now. And one thing you do, you don't chase them. You run away, you use advantage of your speed. And if they firing missile, you can use boost. It will naturally give you much of an extra speed, but drops the lock. Regardless of the distance, drops the lock. So we survived. They were not able to destroy us. We don't have crazy firepower uh, into one target and we are outranging them. They can turn around, but you can see you will not be blown out of the water. And you will kill yeah, some ships. Back. Something just died because I turned around. Listen up. And Listen that's up. the least pleasant scenario. You shouldn't be facing ships directly. It's not beneficial. So that's why I recommend flying away during combat. But your speed is your advantage. High shield values and ability to use a boost. Not for speed, but for dropping enemy log when the situation is too hot and after that speed remains like i have some perks into engines and i have a companion as you can see engine with additional bar but it's very easy to achieve 200 speed with this ship and your turrets are handling all the threats around In case of missile lock boost so it's quite an easy mode quite an easy mode and this flight test is performed on very high level so enemies will not be in a higher level than they are in here and they are dying they're not able to kill me so the strategy is slow and steady win the race and i think you will truly enjoy the cargo capacity in here uh, usually so angry on the cargo capacity with over thirty thousand, i'm quite certain you can keep all the resources you actually need in this game. So if you want to craft something, that's the ship you need. The flying home. So, make some so to build our dream home in space, we'll need to visit several ports. But first one is Deimos space station, solar system next to Mars. Inside, just run straight. We are going to talk with the technician that is just down the stairs. And now we choose to modify our ships. So now whatever you bring in here, hopefully you scrapped and we are building. We are placing the landing bay first. Then on top of landing bay, we add our habitats. Starting with regular all-in-one. So there will be a bed, 
then we'll be attaching on the sides one with the workshops attach on one side and on other side i will attach one with science lab so we have all the workbenches attached in here and then two more habitats of your choice we are placing here two more and I'm just adding more passenger slots. You can do whatever you want with those. Add whatever two habitats you want. Uh, this habitat placement ensures that you have a nice access and there is no maze inside. Uh, then we are adding amazing cockpit. We are at Deimos, so Deimos do offer amazing RS bridge with eight crew stations, 360 cargo to start with. So great, I love this cockpit. If you are buying something at Deimos, get the cockpit. Now we are flipping it over, very important part. We need a docker, so docker goes in here. And we are going for docker top bottom flippable, so this will attach. We have docker sorted. And now we start placing very important structural elements in here. And we are going for reactor first, so we don't forget everything in order. We need one that offers 40 power. So that will be SF40 shared flow reactor that I will be placing in here from Dogstar uh, as well. If you somehow don't see something when you are placing, that's a quick tip. Maybe we're hovering over wrong attachment. So if you want to see absolutely everything, you always move away from your ship, then place build, and then you will see the whole list. As if you hover over attachment, it will only show you what can fit into the attachment. And that sometimes can be a problem. Maybe you don't know. It will not fit where you want to fit it. We lift it up and we place it in here. Oh, actually, you need to go even higher. But it will not attach yet. So, uh, to sort out this debacle, to help with our attachment, we already start placing some cargo. We need to place some cargo. And for cargo, We'll be using Galleon S204 cargo holds. So let's attach some so it will be easier with other stuff we are attaching to it. Let's start placing some cargo. There will be more cargo in a moment. Let's just place first layer. And now we can elevate this reactor a little bit higher. That's where it's supposed to go. Now, I don't know how it will attach, so let's find the grab drive grab drive and we are looking for the one with attachments all around and 50 trust we really need this trust even though max jump range for any ship is 30 light years uh, we need it because our weight will reduce it soon so we need this one and we are attaching it in here just behind the reactor so we have reactor grab drive uh, now what we need next is the fuel for the drive. And we can go big, to be honest. So fuel tank, 900T HE3 tank. Absolute beast. We can go with that. Oh, and yeah, this, like, that's some details you need to pay attention. There is no attachment on top, and I will probably need on top, so I swap places. Uh, let's put that here and this inside. Okay, you can always swap them with places. So now we have almost everything. Reactor is there. The drive's there. The engine is needed. We are putting engine underneath. I like engine underneath. And there will be a surprise here. Because we're going for Ammon engine. Class A, two power, single engine. And there's a reason for that. Our ship will be so heavy that mobility will be zero regardless. So we are going for a top speed of 150. If we cannot get mobility, we'll get the speed out of it. Yeah, I know it's odd, but speed will be always possible. It will just take a little bit longer to achieve it. Now from this point, we attach a little bit more cargo. Let's attach more cargo. There is unfortunately a limit how much we can have. Otherwise, we'll put more, but the jump drive is a limit. If you go too hardcore with a cargo, the jump drive will not be able to take you anywhere. So you'll have immobile space home and that's not what we are after. 
So let's put all those cargo containers. We're at the 20k cargo at this moment. We can add a little bit more from my experience without absolutely destroying ability to travel. So let's try to add one, two, three, four cargo. We have 24 light here. It's jump drive. I want a little bit more cargo. 23. With 22, we good. So 22. We are not adding more cargo. 22 light years. It's like a minimum. Unless you invest into perk that can extend your drive range. So then maybe. But otherwise, I would not recommend going be below 22. You will be too limited with your ship. Especially that we need to still add some components. So it will be heavier. But 31,000 cargo at this moment. This is good. And one thing is missing, obviously, at this point. We need to add landing gear. So we go for the gear. And that's the main reason we are at this space station. That's the only landing gear from Deimos that is so compact and free lander trust. So now we need to add this landing gear in every available slot. Yes, uh, we cannot do it without adding gear in every available slot. There's a little bit of a problem that we cannot add in there. I think I will need to reorganize something. Yes, we need to reorganize some of those cargo containers from the top to the bottom as we need to place additional two gears. So let's take two of the cargo containers, just destroy them from in here and build them again over there. So back to cargo. That was my mistake, but yeah, I, I'm not I'm not claiming I'm perfect. I'm making mistakes. So two more cargo in here. So now, thanks to that, we can attach additional gear. So two more pieces of gear, and that will support our ship. As you can see, it does require some solid support. So now it's supported. It's supported. All essentials at this moment equipped. Uh, we just need some optional elements that are not so optional as we need shield so we attach shield here on top and we compensate our lack of mobility with the strongest possible shield assurance sg 1800 1600 power to the shield so we should be good with that on top and at this point our job at deimos is done so we need to save it because deimos do not have additional pieces that we need so we just save as is at this moment. Now we are going uh, to the Porima system. At this point, our ship is mobile, so that's not a problem. And we are going to Porima 3. They have Red Mile there. Set course to Red Mile, Porima 3, yes, please. And the vendor is inside, so we need to head forward from the spawn point into the Red Mile to talk with a ship services technician. Run in, you have ship services boot in here, and we need to talk yeah. with Lon about additional modifications to some. our ship. And for Lon, we'll be purchasing additional cargo. This time we are after the shielded one, that's why we are here. And to keep with the aesthetics, we are going after Caravel V102 shielded cargo hold for one side here and on the other side in here. You could attach more if you plan to smuggle a lot of stuff, but from my experience, total of 500 shielded cargo combined with so much total cargo, more than enough. And one more thing we are buying, uh, this vendor is from uh, equipment category, scan jammer multi-frequency, and we are attaching it here only temporarily. We'll move it. It will not stay here, but for now we have attachment in this spot and that's everything from this vendor. So again, save and now we are heading to volley system you already know which planet volley alpha neon and we are after a neon core and by when you're looking at elevator you turn right and that's my favorite shop services we are running to the end and into the elevator at the end of this corridor there it is there will be tile 
Very cool ships. Choose floor. Tayo Astroneering. In, turn right. Just three more Run pictures. down the stairs. And speak no with Veronica about the ship modifications. Prepare to, be Prepare to be amazed. That was she said. And now, final elements can be added. We have all of this stuff. Essential elements that are still missing are weapon systems. So we'll be adding weapons. Our weapon placements. So we attach multiple weapon placements. There will be a bunch of turrets and some regular weapons. So we need to choose structural and equipment plates. Lucky for us, Tayo is producing equipment plates, so we'll be able to place everything as we want. I can already switch that to middle in here. I don't like it on top of my on top of my cockpit. I don't know why, just personal preference. Then equipment plates on the back. Three equipment plates on the back. Three on front. And two equipment plates on the middle. I think that's enough equipment plates. At least it's supposed to be. Now we are placing our weapons. So we go for regular weapons to have something to fire forward when we need to. And at class B, we are looking for PBO-175 Auto Helion Beam, as this one offers the highest DPS straightforward. So we are equipping those. Four of those weapons. Then on the rear, we are placing turrets. The most powerful that we can get will be firing backwards. And those are Obliterator 250 alpha turret not the beam and we rotate it so it faced backwards three of those don't forget to rotate them all oh i miscalculated my plates we need to put two more plates on top in here two more plates small miscalculation and now we are placing additional two turrets this time those are pbo 300 auto alpha turret we are placing two facing left and two facing right. At this moment we can add some cosmetic upgrades to our ship. I really like to see what's going on outside. So you can put porthole ports on those. So we'll be able to see into the space while walking inside your ship. And on front you can put some two porthole four. A lot of viewing experience. And the side ones. Oh, not the weapon mount. And to add additional cosmetic touch to it. Uh, luckily in here. Tayo has in its offer those attachments to the side. And you can even make them into weapon mounts. If you want to choose your weapons. Move your weapons in different places. So it is all available. Those attachments are very light, so it shouldn't be much of a problem. It's just one weight each. Only thing you need to keep in mind. If your jump drive range drops below 22, you added too much stuff. And if you would like to go a little bit more crazy with your aesthetics, you can reorganize a little bit everything and incorporate those uh, this big plate in front. That looks quite cool too. I don't think it's necessary. I mean, if this will be like in here, if it's necessary for me, but that's interesting option. If you, if you want it, you can make it more streamlined. So at this point, all we need to do is slap some paint on it. And I'm going with some dark aggressive red mixed with dark gray and finished with black accents. That's what I'm going for. Your choices are yours. And there is one error. This one error is because we didn't attach weapons yet. So assign one. It's very important. Your number one is your auto helion beam, the manual weapon. <laughs> Otherwise you will need to press odd button to fire. So that's the manual weapon. And other two will be turrets. So PBO 300 and obliterator. 
I will put Obliterator second because that's the more powerful and third PBO 300. So I know it's backward facing, side facing in case I will be maneuvering with the power levels. So I know what I'm changing. And at this point, one more touch. If I go into flight check, I will try to change the name, rename the ship. The name will be Sweet Home. Confirm. Now just approve all the changes. Enter. And that's our home sweet home in flight. Amazing cargo capacity still can achieve all the speed required. And you can do everything on board. It is a flying home.